Hi everyone, Big Mac here. Uh, I figured I would show you guys a little something that people, most people don't think exists. Um, there is a division rule for seven, so I'm going to teach you that, try and teach you that right now. Okay, I do have to give you guys a bit of a warning though. This formula is not nice. It's not clean, it's pretty nasty. So in all actuality, it would probably be easier if you did, you know, literally divide the number by seven shorthand or longhand division. I mean, this formula, it's nice, and it does work, but, you know, it could, it's got a lot of parts, so it's not necessarily, you know, quick and easy like three, like divisibility rules for three or other digits. So how does this work? Let's take a six-digit number. I'm just going to start off with six digits, and then I'll extrapolate it to all cases. So we have a six-digit number. Um, I'm going to use A, B, C, D, E, and F as the digits. Uh, in in that order. So we can see that the rule is this weird formula. We have F plus 3E plus 2D minus C minus 3B minus 2A. If that small formula, if you add all the terms up, and if that number is divisible by 7, if it's a multiple of 7, then your original number is also divisible by 7. So you might think it's weird that it starts off with F, and then goes up to A. Um, I'm going to use that for convention for for our broader cases. So that's why it's in that convention. So is that it? Is that the magical division division by seven formula? Yes, that's pretty much it. I gave I gave one example here for you guys. Uh, 325,731. Uh, I plug in the numbers into the formula. Again, I start with the ones digit, which is one in this case, and then I go upwards to the last digit to the 3. So, you know, I combine all my terms, I add them up, and I get a value of 7, which means that 325,731 is divisible by 7. And then here I show that it's actually 7 times 46,533. So, 6 digits are cool, but what if it's not 6 digits? Not a problem. If the number is less than 6 digits, uh, just go ahead and use the same formula, but just pretend that your other, that your larger digit that your larger digits are just zeros. So that way, basically those last terms of the formula, the terms with the A and the B, those would pretty much just disappear. So like here I have a four digit number, C, D, E, F. I keep the values the same just for notation purposes. So yeah, you just plug in that formula again and it works just like before. If you have a number that's more than six digits, uh, it starts getting a little complicated, but if you notice, there is a pattern. Here on this table, I have the, the name of the digit on the left side and what you multiply it by on the right side. So like in our formula for up to a hundred thousands we go plus one, plus three, plus two, minus one, minus three, minus two. And in fact this pattern repeats every six digits. So starting at the millions place you go back to plus one, plus three, plus two. So if you notice there's another pattern here. It keeps going one, three, two, one, three, two except every group of three has alternating signs. So that's a different way to look at it. So of course, you know, the big thing I'm trying to emphasize here is start with the ones digit and then just carry out the pattern as many terms as you need it for however many digits are in your number. So how, how does this work? Is it magic? Is it just, you know, something magical that fell out of the sky and landed in this lap? No. But there are, may, are a couple of things that you may have noticed in your studies that, you know, can allude to this. Like if you notice 900,000, sorry, 999,999 is a multiple of 7. Like if you took uh, 1 7th, the decimal fraction, point 142857, repeating, and then if you multiplied that by 7, you you would notice that you have point nine 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 repeating, which is one basically. Likewise, there's also the you may have noticed that a thousand and one, which is just one more than a thousand, that's also a multiple of seven, and it also happens to be a multiple of eleven. So what's the trick behind this? As in for all the other divis divisibility rules, it basically has to come down to adding terms. So again, I'm not here to lecture you on college mathematics, but Basically, we have our number in question, and we can take out multiples of seven that we know for certain are in the are in that number. So, for example, say you wanted to find out if 91 was divisible by seven. Instead of using the whole formula, you would think, okay, 
70 goes into 91, and 70 is a d divisible by 7, so we can discard that 70, subtract what we have left, we have 21, which is obviously a multiple of 7. So it kind of works in that same notion. And again, I'm not going to here to talk. About, I'm not here to teach you that stuff. I'm just here to show you the seven rule. But there are plenty of places online where you can look that up. And like I mentioned, this is kind of how you also prove, uh, likewise, divisibility tests for three, nine, eleven, maybe a couple other numbers. But using these same notations, uh, another way to think about it is if you have. Uh, I always called it expanded form. I'm not sure if that's the universal term or not, but. Basically, when you stretch out a number based on its digits, it's equal to the ones digit plus 10 times the tens digit plus 100 times the hundreds digit, etc. So that's another way where you can easily extract your multiples of 7. Of course, like I mentioned, this way is a lot nastier than other ones. So that's why nobody ever teaches it or forces you to remember it. Other ones are nice and, are nice and clean and simple. So where can I learn more stuff like this? Um, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, uh, there are college classes that, taught, that teach number theory, which you know discuss these kinds of things, how numbers are related to each other by the remainder and things, and a lot more. So if this kind of stuff interests you, by all means, go ahead and try checking it out. And like I mentioned at the beginning, this rule is not uh, easy or fast, but it does exist, which I think says a lot than some people give it credit for. All right, this is Big Max saying, later.